Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to fix and replace the broken corners of your ThinkPad laptop. This could apply to any laptop with plastic pieces or basically any plastic on anything. The steps and procedures will apply. This process is very straightforward and I'm confident that anyone can do it. All you need is your broken ThinkPad with, and it doesn't have to be the corner, it could be any crack or broken off piece. You need a soldering iron. You actually technically don't need a soldering iron because I'm going to show you multiple ways that you can approach this problem. You're going to want to use a respirator if you are melting the plastic with the soldering iron. You also need some sacrificial plastic. This is just a roll of 3D print filament. This is the roll of it and I'm going to be cutting a piece. It's just ABS plastic and it should meld very well with the ThinkPad plastic. You're also going to need something like tin snips that I have here to cut the plastic piece, the sacrificial replacement part. So that's all I'm going to do right now. Just cut a little piece out of this material. It doesn't have to be this material. It can be any plastic that is somewhat similar and it doesn't even have to be the same color because we're going to paint this later. Most electronics and most things are made out of ABS plastic, but if you're not sure, then you could just try it. And if it doesn't work, then go find another piece. So here I am and I'm just trying to line it up as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, you actually want it a little bit oversized. You want more material than not enough material. The hardest part is just getting the first tack to kind of stick and you can use some tape or something else to help hold it in place before it starts sticking on its own. And then you just wanna bridge the gap between the old plastic and the new, just as I am showing here. This process is called plastic welding and you're basically just welding the two different pieces of plastic together. You're just melting them and taking two pieces and molding them into one piece using heat. You can see I'm using the iron to kind of smooth things out and get the corner to be roughly in the shape that I want. This is not a perfect pass. We're going to smooth it out and make it look a lot better later. However, at this step, you just want to get it roughly in the right shape and you actually want a little bit more material than not enough because it's easier to sand down and take away material but it's fine if you took off too much because you can just add more by melting more into the spot. Now we're going to move on to the smoothing process. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper piece here. You can use anything that's going to help knock down and make this a lot smoother. You can progressively get into finer grits to get a smoother and smoother surface but for this, I'm just going to knock things back and get it roughly in the smoothened shape that I would like. I do want to stress that the amount of time that you take to smooth things out and get them into the right shape is going to be ultimately whether or not your repair looks better or worse. So the more time you spend on prepping and getting everything to line up and look exactly how you want it, the better the overall fix is going to be. And here you can see everything is looking a lot smoother. It looks more dimensionally how it is supposed to look. But I do have a few little spots right there that if I keep sanding, I think I'm going to actually affect the shape, which I don't want to do at this point. Because this is the first time that I'm doing this repair, I wanted to kind of experiment and try a bunch of different things because now that everything is kind of roughly where I want it, all I'm really trying to do at this point is just smooth things out and get them to be a very smooth surface. Because I was pretty happy with the overall shape of the plastic weld that I had made, I just had a few little surface imperfections and I wanted to see if just adding some Bondo would be an easier fix than trying to add a little bit more plastic and then sand it down again just to save myself a little bit of time. I want to stress to you guys that this step and using Bondo is not necessary. I am fully confident that just with the plastic welding and enough sanding, you could get this repair looking exactly like as if it was factory. I'm also confident that if you only wanted to use Bondo, that you could also get a similar result without doing any plastic welding. So I'm using a bunch of different methods and hybridizing them all together. However, each one of these methods I'm going to show you could probably work just fine and you would only need to use one of them. Now that the Bondo has set, I am just going to repeat the process of sanding away and hopefully I can get a very smooth finish by the time I am done sanding. 
So basically the same steps as with the plastic weld. I'm just gonna add a little bit more Bondo than I need and then we're just gonna sand away to get a smooth and level surface. I can see how some people might be worried that they're gonna scratch up their ThinkPad logo or maybe they have a fingerprint reader that is right near the place they wanna repair. And if you are concerned about that, you might wanna mask it off. We are gonna be masking this off later because we're gonna be painting this. However, you might wanna do that masking step before you start sanding. I'm pretty controlled with my sanding here and I'm not in any danger of scratching up anything that I can't paint over or repair later. So here's after a bunch of sanding and things are looking a lot smoother and everything is looking pretty good here and it actually feels pretty solid. After sanding down there's hardly any Bondo on this. It's just a very very small top layer to smooth things out and as you can see it looks very similar to the part that isn't broken on the other side so things are looking good here and because I'm using this as my test mule I'm also going to be trying some JB weld as an experiment to see how this is going to hold up and what I should have done is plastic welded the underside you can see where the repair is right there and it is not as strong if you don't also reinforce the bottom of it it would have been easy for me to just bust out the soldering iron and then quickly patch up or maybe even add a little bit more plastic to that but I wanted to see if JB Weld might be a little bit easier you know you just slap it on there and then you don't have to deal with the fumes or anything like that it's pretty easy I'm also confident that you could probably do this entire repair solely with JB Weld and it isn't going to be as easily sandable as the plastic or the Bondo or a mixture of the both but if you don't have Bondo or a soldering iron or anything like that, then all you had was JB Weld. I am confident that you could also do this same repair with just JB Weld. So I'm basically showing you guys three different methods for repairing this and you can use just one of those methods or be like me and hybridize and use all three in the same repair and that will work just fine. So here we are after a lot of sanding things are very smooth it's looking really good but I do want to stress you have to be careful when adding material to the underside of this part because the tolerances are very tight and it might interfere with other components it's not a big deal you can just go in and sand and fix later and just take off a little bit more material but I did want to point that out here's my method for masking off the ThinkPad logo I just put down some blue painters tape and then do the outline in a pencil to make the outline more noticeable and then just trace around it with an exacto knife because the logo is recessed the edges don't have to be flawless and I've done this many times already with great results with that all masked up we can move on to painting I'm using rust-oleum high performance this is a matte black finish I'm just going to be applying some very light coats here and I do want to state that this finish is not a perfect match for think pads and it is a bit more matte you might want to experiment with maybe a satin black finish and it also depends on how old and how worn your piece that you're painting is because whatever you paint this is going to look absolutely perfect while if the rest of your laptop like this one is kind of aged and worn it is going to be quite noticeable where it is painted and where it is not for best results you're going to want to paint the entire part you can also use plasti dip as a lot of the rubberized coatings also look very nice you can paint it an entirely different color like i will show you later however this is the results we have right here from our repair and it looks very good it is not perfect there are some slight little wobbles as you can see when the light hits it just correctly as I stressed to you guys earlier the more time and energy you put into sanding and making things look really smooth the better the end result is going to be mine is not perfect there's slight little wobbles where the bondo is not perfectly flat however from about a foot away it looks pretty darn good as you can see the paint is not an exact match especially with different parts that are worn so just letting you know that if you only paint one area it will be noticeable and although it is not perfect it definitely looks worlds better than having a big crack or chip missing from this piece so even though it isn't flawless it looks 
good enough and it looks way better than it did before. If you wanted to spend more time than I did on this, you could make it look even better and it would be virtually indistinguishable from a new piece. I did have to sand away some of this to allow for clearance, however I did get it to fit and everything was looking very good. And I only painted this black to show you guys because I eventually customized this and I didn't really care about making it look perfectly smooth because I was going to be applying a very crazy pattern on top and because it is a more matte finish you can't even really tell where there was any kind of imperfection in not having it be perfectly smooth. If you want to see this crazy customization, check out my video series on this and others that I have done painting other laptops. I hope this video was informational and helpful to you, and I hope you guys can fix your ThinkPads. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.